Yeah, my name's David Eagles. Um, I was the uh, an early test pilot on the Tornado, um, and I'm glad to see it here in the London uh, RAF Museum. I think the Tornado was um, it was a brilliant airplane. It flew very well. Um, it was well designed uh, for the role that uh, the um, that NATO had in mind. Um, it was also um, from a different aspect, a wonderful aircraft to bring Europe together, to bring the engineering companies of uh, Germany and Italy and Britain together. Uh, so I really enjoyed the, um, the blending of the cultures and the people involved in the program. Yes, the Tornado was um, revolutionary in, uh, when it first flew in 74. Um, it had reverse thrust, which was uh, quite new in a short um, coupled airplane like this um, and it had automatic terrain following radar you could actually dial in the height above the ground you wanted to fly at and take your hands off the stick and it would do that for you it had variable geometry in other words wing sweep it allows you to um, reach quite high Mach numbers by dumping drag if you have a straight wing you um, you're pretty draggy uh, certainly if you get close to supersonic um, and by sweeping the wing uh, so that you're a slim uh, outline you delay the onset of compressibility on the wing and you reduce the overall drag anyway. fly -by wire which was the fourth innovation is simply replacing the linkage between the stick and the flying controls with um, uh, electrical wires um, and when you move the stick now, you're actually putting a signal into the um, to a computer. I think the collection in this particular hangar is fantastic. It's uh, it has a lot of our British Aerospace um, aircraft in it. Uh, I love the Buccaneer and particularly the Tornado, which I did a lot of work in, um, and the Jaguar II hanging off the ceiling is another of my favourite airplanes. I think the Buccaneer takes a lot of beating. I, th I thought it was the most beautiful airplane to fly fast and low, um, which it was designed to do to drop bombs uh, or toss them from a very low level. The Tornado has many features which will allow you to do that um, in different ways, which the Buccaneer doesn't have. Uh, but I, would, I, would, I wouldn't say the Buccaneer is better than the Tornado or vice versa. I love them both. The EAP is a very similar platform and the flight control system is, is, uh, has a similar architecture uh, avionically. Um, I didn't get fly the EAP in the later stages when it uh, reached a, um, an ability to take, you know, take on carefree handling, which the Typhoon has. Carefree handling allows the pilot to do anything at all with the stick. Um, he can't overstress it, um, the, the airplane senses it's getting close to its limit and, and backs off what you've put in. Um, so I, I think it was, the EAP was very pleasant to fly, but I never got as far as the limiting aspects of it. The, the Spitfire is outstanding because of its low friction, the, the, the control runs uh, that you're holding, you, you could actually um, put in an input um, in, in the, through the stick in the Spitfire and not even feel any resistance uh, uh, in the control run. The Sea Fury was a much beefier airplane than the Spitfire um, and was I, I loved this, the Sea Fury. It had a, an automatic uh, pitch control uh, whereas with airplanes like the Spitfire you have to, uh, before you can put on full throttle you have to have uh, just the, the pitch of the propeller, otherwise you'll over boost it. Um, um, the Sea Fury allowed you to pull the pitch control back into an automatic <coughs> position and it would alter the pitch required for the boost you were putting on. So it was a nicer airplane, it was a single lever like a jet, single thrust lever airplane and uh, very maneuverable.